This is Ramesh Hariharan. I am the CEO and co-founder of Strand Life Sciences. And today I'm going to talk to you about rare genetic diseases. So rare diseases is an umbrella term for thousands of diseases, of which for about 7,300 odd, we know the molecular basis, which means that we know that they are caused by mutations in certain genes. There are, of the 20,000 genes that we have, there are about 4,765 in which these mutations occur. Together, these 4,700 odd genes and mutations in them uh, cause diseases that affect 300 million people worldwide. Of these 300 million, a significant fraction, about a, roughly half, are actually children, 30% uh, of whom may not live to see their fifth birthday. Diagnosing one of these diseases is not easy. It takes several years and perhaps even more than a decade often for these diseases to be diagnosed and sometimes they just go undiagnosed. In recent years, genome sequencing has, um, has provided a powerful tool to diagnosing these diseases and has um, substantially improved our ability to diagnose uh, these diseases. Genome sequencing emerged at the turn of the century, um, turn of the millennium, you could say. Um, however, uh, it was extremely expensive at about uh, $100 million to do a single genome. But that has reduced dramatically to um, a few hundred dollars today. And that cost continues to, um, to decrease, hopefully in the future. And that has made genome sequencing extremely accessible. And indeed, um, as the use of genome sequencing for rare disease diagnosis has uh, grown, um, a number of cases that were hitherto very difficult to diagnose have become much easier. I'll give you one example. Uh, there was this 27-year-old um, person who uh, came to us um, and uh, he had, well, he was actually in his 40s, but he had progressive loss of skeletal muscle control from the age of 27. And... Uh, for 13 odd years, he had been uh, going from doctor to doctor, both in India and the US. Um, there was no family history, nothing to go by. Um, all kinds of alternative diagnoses were, um, were explored and tried, but nothing really um, held water. Eventually, when we sequenced his uh, genome, uh, we were able to identify the mutation in the GNE1 gene that was conclusively the cause of his affliction. And that also suggested um, that his disease was on account of uh, the lack of a particular molecule called sialic acid and perhaps supplementation even in a clinical trial setting might help offset um, uh, at least stem uh, further progression. So uh, there are many many such um, cases that we do today routinely in our labs in several labs around the world. Typically we are able to diagnose about 50 odd percent of the cases that come to us we are able to conclusively diagnose. In another 20-25%, we are able to find suspicious mutations um, that could potentially be the cause of disease, but which we are unable to conclusively pin down. Such variants are called variants of unknown significance. And then there are 20 odd percent of the cases where even with genome sequencing, we are unable to say much. Our crusade and uh, researchers in genomics, their crusade around, <coughs> around the world today, <coughs> is to is to progress and reduce the fraction of variants of unknown significance down from the 20-25% and then also uh, make inroads into the remaining 20 odd percent that we are unable to diagnose with genome sequencing. One way to do that is that we've shown in our publications that 12 to 20 percent of these of the mutations are not simple mutations, they are more complex mutations that involve large chunks of the genome. And identifying those needs more sequencing and more sophisticated analysis. And by pushing that both of those factors to, uh, to, to their limit, perhaps we can diagnose more of these diseases. That's not something that's often done, but that more of that is, um, is something that needs to be done. In addition, if we sequence many more people, so population scale sequencing, then we can uh, perhaps find several of these uh, variants of unknown significance in people who are unaffected and therefore eliminate them as 
potential causes. So several of the VUSs, work variants of unknown significance can potentially be resolved through population scale sequencing. And finally, there are a number of emerging methods, extensions, I would say. So what we do today for sequencing is called short read sequencing, expanding that to long read sequencing, performing RNA sequencing in addition to what we do today, which is DNA sequencing, um, building deep learning models. So this is the age of AI, building deep learning models that better predict the effect of a mutation. Uh, doing whole genome sequencing and not just sequencing the genes, which is what we do today, and doing periodic reanalysis. The knowledge on this area, in this area is growing so fast that if you reanalyze periodically all the sequencing that's happened over the last few years, uh, in the light of new data and evidence that's accumulated, more cases can potentially be diagnosed. So the hope is that using all of these methods, and hopefully these methods will become um, as, as the field matures become more commonplace, more inexpensive and more mainstream and our ability to diagnose these diseases will uh, grow by leaps and bounds in the years to come. Thank you.